Institute of Veneto, was given by the president. And um, um, a few, uh, uh, before uh, I leave Ignazio Musu, who's um, competent on the subject, to introduce to the uh, meat of a rationale for the, for the meeting, let me uh, tell you a few, uh, a few uh, ideas on why we, uh, we embarked in this and uh, why we think that this is an important uh, direction to pursue in the future for research in the milieu of science where we're coming from in particular. So the, uh, you, you know, of course, the discounting and evaluation of environmental policies is the subject. And the, the excuse is to um, talk about emerging issues of integration of development and environmental thinking, actually. And we believe that few issues are more important nowadays. And, and um, we, we, see the, we, we feel the sense of urgency that uh, scientists also understand the importance of being able to provide a reasonably accurate uh, uh, estimates, for instance, that could uh, serve well the volume of ecosystem, of ecosystem services, be they provisioning services, regulating services, supporting or cultural services, and some of them directly. In, in reading Partha Dasgupta's recent paper on the nature of economic development, I was finding so many uh, um, issues and themes that directly pertain to my own work. Uh, that um, I think it's uh, imperative, especially for our graduate students, to uh, start thinking in this direction. So uh, to pursue this in, a broad, in broad terms, we have invited um, prominent uh, economists, of course, ecologists, and uh, environmental scientists, uh, and physicists also. Uh, that's, that's a particular event of mine. Physicists see things at a distance, and they are experts of the tools. So they are typically very useful, in fact, for understanding uh, some of the phenomena we observe, whether in the natural world or whether in the artificial world. So uh, the, the format is, uh, I'll be discussing briefly the format, I'll be talking not uh, briefly, I'll be talking briefly, in fact, uh, about how we have organized in the most, uh, 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 in the less constrained format, if you please. So the issues, as um, uh, a totally the, uh, the uh, choice of uh, invited speakers, in fact, um, the involve um, economic evaluation, value ecosystems, of course, uh, discounting benefits and costs of environmental regulations, um, discounting and multi-criteria optimization in ecology, which is also important, the extended concept of wealth, something which uh, deeply uh, touches, because we have a certain and intuitive uh, uh, perception of what this means, but um, to, there's a lot to do, I understand, in the direction that can actually um, give a proper quantitative framework to that. And uh, still the evaluation of environmental policies, and as an environmental scientist myself, I know how far behind, how much uh, we don't know, uh, in um, providing the type of answers that will allow economic uh, development thinking to integrate uh, positively uh, the results of our, of our work. And um, uh, stochasticity, of course, in processes driving both economics and the environment, which is uh, kind of important because from where we come from, we know the environmental fl fluctuations are inevitable. What is the consequence of large scale on ecological process to a certain extent is known and to other extents, it is not known. So where are we? Where are we going, et cetera? And then global drivers and controls of food security, for instance, is also an issue uh, about which um, we'll be hearing, especially from Paolo Dodorico today. Something in which um, uh, uh, some, but in, in brief, our aim is to contribute, however limited, of course, our contribution could possibly be, uh, to our capability to, uh, to the establishment of a, of a uh, broadly participated notion of sustainability, like the one that economists are uh, producing today, one uh, which is understandable to moral scientists, if you please, from the, the disciplines of economics, but also be understandable to, uh, to environmental scientists. And uh, so we have gathered a rather diverse group, and, and uh, not unreasonably so, and uh, in the tradition of Instituto, as, as uh, Gian Antonio Daniele was saying, we've been doing this for almost 200 years, and um, so uh, the, uh, we have a configuration of an academy who so are used to, uh, to, to um, provide some sort of a common language for people with different backgrounds. And I think that could be also a good turf for developing this in this uh, fundamental, fundamental arena. So a legitimate question, of course, that Ignazio, my, my good friend, uh, could um, uh, 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 legitimate before is what do I know about the subject? Well, uh, little or nothing or nearly nothing, but um, 
I am a hydrologist, uh, and, and I work in, in um, uh, the understanding of the role, for instance, of river networks as ecological corridors for species, for populations, for pathogens of waterborne disease. So I know firsthand that certain services that are provided for free from the environment are indeed important. And then the important question is, will large-scale, for instance, uh, water resources management schemes uh, uh, include protection of biodiversity? Do we know how? And, and that's, that's an important issue because uh, in, in, in places in which competing uses of water are permeate the literature, whether the, 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 the effects of deforestation, whether the effect of uh, land uh, uh, use of land cover transformations, uh, be them uh, a, a, any kind of... Uh, of um, so the, the idea is that are we equipped to provide reasonably accurate... Uh, uh, predictions of what's going to happen in the system. Uh, one example, which is uh, altering the natural sequence of stream flows, say for hydropower production, uh, changes the structure of the fluvial ecosystem that arrives into it. No GDP-like plan would ever be able, at the current state of knowledge, of embed that into anything reasonable. Can we value that? Because the very idea that we have something which is it, it's only an intuitive measure it's of no use in, 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 in development thinking, actually. And, um, or, for instance, competing uses to be extinct. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm talking from a narrow perspective that I command. But, for instance, I'm working in the hydrologic controls of drivers of waterborne disease. Schistosomiasis is a degenerate, or billard sows, is a degenerative disease uh, which is propagated by water. Um, the development of irrigation schemes is a vehicle for enhanced uh, 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 diffusion of a disease within populations, within, typically the south of the world, the poor populations, sub-Saharan Africa in particular, in Burkina Faso where we study this. Can we, can we balance the, the uh, of course the GDP would see the effect of, a, of a, the, the gross domestic product, would see the effect of a development of irrigation scheme, but would never be able to see the effect of uh, enhanced uh, propagation of waterborne disease. So these are the, the, the kinds of things that uh, we'll, be, we'll be discussing. And, and I keep telling my students, um, this is an important issue. We know nothing about this, but we have to learn, we have to talk, we have to, to, to follow our leaders in um, um, make way for a, an understanding, a proper, developed, enhanced understanding of the concept of, of, uh, uh, of sustainability. Uh, or food security, for that matter. Uh, I was quoting from uh, a beautiful paper Professor Padascupta, you'll be hearing about, most probably wrote recently. Um, he was quoting um, a, 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 from a, a World uh, a Economic, from the World Bank, I think. It was a document published years ago. This it was essentially saying that long-run economic growth is often slowed by widespread chronic food insecurity. Now, one of the questions that we see from a narrow perspective, a hydrologist, if you work on the uh, global virtual water trade, you know, if you trade one um, kilogram of meat, you're trading 15,000 liters of water, actually. And it can be traded. You can trade goods for, and, and of course, you, you have a feeling, intuitive feeling that global, globalization and the trade of virtual water would be something which Kutznets like would increase the well being on general terms. So you'd expect that development would mean um, a better world, a stabler world, etc. But I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. If you're studying, for instance, the stability and in the, uh, in the, in the uh, if you assume the carrying capacity of a population depends parts on resources generated in situ and part of resources generated by virtual water trade. Instabilities in the virtual water trade, that means if drought strikes some place, you would have that uh, you first feed your own people and then you export. That the globalized world tends to be a world that not necessarily is a better one or a stabler one or a safer one. So here's the connection. We would love to be able to understand uh, better how to communicate, how to understand the language of the development thinking, actually, and to contribute to the uh, new notions of, of uh, health. Of, of wealth in a, in a broad sense, the sense which is uh, proposed by, by the economists. I want um, uh, the last um, issues and um, uh, uh, strength on limitations of collective actions is something which is also interesting. We've been studying, and that's why Matteo, Amos, uh, you're talking about uh, people in statistical mechanics whom I admire very much for their understanding at a distance of problems. I'm interested in uh, self-organized adaptive processes with many degrees of freedom, but self-organized naturally. Is there anything inevitable in the things that we do, in the activity we collectively pursue? 
And, um, and to that thing, you see, why nature, for instance, produces forms that look like at, uh, from, from, I mean, from a, from a few meters to thousands of kilometers, for instance, what is the dynamic origins of, of self-similarity? The processes look alike on a small scale and on a large scale, in space and in time. And um, is this, uh, does this have anything to do with that? Because I presume it does, in fact. And that's what we will be uh, delighted to uh, to, and, and in brief, I mean, it, it, this is surrounding us, the economic use of the environment in another. I'm sure that Ignazio will introduce to that. Uh, as a last example, you know, you probably heard, if you read the papers, about uh, the, 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 this huge discussion about uh, the large cruise ships that uh, enter the Venice Lagoon. And here's another example in which uh, the benefit it, uh, can be, can be uh, enter a budget sheet easily because it can be seen in terms of employment, in terms of fees, in terms of something, and the damage would never show up anywhere. You can't account it. So you can't propose in the face of figures, of economic figures, feelings. So we have to be able to characterize that, and we have to be able to get environmental sciences to provide uh, reasonably accurate uh, uh, answers to a number of phenomena, one by one, with the sharpness required to a scientist, but in that particular framework. So the ignorance of the economic worth of natural capital, um, quoting Partha's beautiful paper, remains the greatest barrier to an understanding of the history of economic development, and that uh, makes sense even to a, to a, to a hydrologist. So, uh, with that in mind, let me tell you a few uh, organizing things. Uh, uh, and um, um, uh, Ignazio, Professor Ignazio Musu will introduce to the topic uh, under the perspective of environmental economics, and um, with a view to the, uh, to, the, to the whole environmental sciences, because uh, I, I, I know very much uh, how much he knows about it. The, the program uh, of the day, uh, which you have seen, it, it's rather informal. So we allocated one hour per talk. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, reasonably informal. So the speaker takes as much time as he wants. I'm encouraging especially the young guys to ask questions, to interact as much as possible. We can break after each period. Um, from 10 o'clock on, there will be coffee and, and perhaps something to eat in the, uh, in the, in the salad you know, right there. There's a table in, uh, in there. But there will, uh, and you can just, uh, I'm encouraging you to go um, just back and forth as you please. And uh, uh, from 10 o'clock onwards. Um, lunch is um, it's going to be like at 12.45. For participants, it's going to be in the billiard uh, room, because we do have a billiard room. There's no billiard any longer, but uh, right there. Whereas I'm, a, I'm, I'm having, uh, Carol, if you're coming, be delighted with the uh, speakers. We have one table uh, for us just to sit down. It's the same food, actually, but just in the cafeteria here. We won't be able to fit uh, in the cafeteria right there. We go through here. Uh, at, uh, I, I told them 12.45, but it can be easily adjusted to 1 o'clock because the program has slightly changed because Matteo has to leave um, in, uh, in the early afternoon. So Marino, if, if we can make it after, after there is uh, Partha, then Simon, um, you're going to have a break after each, uh, after each talk, um, then Matteo, and then Marino Gatto, possibly Marino you'll be speaking before lunch uh, because there will probably be time, otherwise it will be the first thing in the afternoon. Everything remains unchanged. The break will be like after 10 o'clock. After I would, I would suggest we break, however, briefly after each uh, period. So uh, after. So uh, with that in mind, thanking all of the participants, of course, many of you are distinguished colleagues, very young guys. Very, uh, so I'm very happy to have you all. Um, I'd love to have Ignazio, in fact, uh, introducing. I mean, the real introduction. Mine was 